the difference between a website, a landing page, and a funnel? And which one should you be using for your business? Tech and automations are the best because they work for you when you're not working. But what should you set up for your business so you get the best results and most bang for your buck? Today, I'm going to break down what is a website, a landing page, and a funnel and go over the pros and cons and differences of each so you know the right one to pick for your business. My name is Stephanie Parisi, and I love helping small business owners grow their influence and profits online using marketing strategies that actually work. And I'm also the leader of the Parisi Pack, a private marketing membership for entrepreneurs. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've ever popped online and seen a site come up and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to buy that. That is so cool. Or you see an advertisement for someone or a funnel pop up and it's like, wow, I really want to work with that person. But at the same point in time, maybe like Steph, I don't know if that was a landing page, a funnel, like what are these different things? So let me explain and break it down for you in simple terms. So first up, let's talk about websites. A website by definition, is a collection of web pages, images, videos, provides a digital presence for a business owner online that can be accessed by anyone with an internet connection. So web pages usually include things like a homepage and about me, a maybe services or products. Hey, this is how to contact us. You can see my website is going to pop up on the screen here. You can check it out. Um, if you go to precipack.com, you can look through all the different pages I have up on there to get a better idea of a website. The main benefit is one, a website is going to help you increase sales, two, improve your customer engagement, and three, really establish your brand identity. And I talk about branding a lot and how important it is. Check out this video on how to brand yourself if you're not sure about how to do that. Websites have different purposes, so they can provide info, e-commerce, marketing, communication, entertainment, you name it. Before we get into the negative, let's talk pros about having a website. First up, they can be very cost effective because they're marketing to a large audience all the time, right? Like when you're offline, particularly if you're using social media or SEO to market the website, they can improve customer engagement and provide customers with a variety of ways to interact with your stuff online. And lastly, they give you credibility. And I talk about how important it is to establish your authority, becoming an expert in your niche in this video. And a professional looking website just naturally does that. How many times have you popped on a site of a business and been like, whoa, just blown out of the water because everything really is so professional. That said, there are some negatives. So cons of having a website can be high initial costs. It can take a lot to set it up, especially if you have a professional web designer create it for you. That said, if you go the route of building it yourself, another con is that it can be very time consuming to build. If you don't have any prior experience, you're not really going to know how to set it all up and it is going to take a long time. Okay, I've been there. I've done that. If you want to see how to build a homepage website from scratch on Canva, check out this video, or you can see how I create sales pages in Canva in this video. And then another negative of having a website is just maintenance, because just because you create it once, you're going to need to continually update it again and again and again. There can be technical issues that pop up too, because if someone goes to click on something and the link is broken, that can be a headache for your audience as well. So now let's move into talking about what is a link landing page. I'm sure you've heard landing pages and funnels tossed around and you may not even know the difference. So let's dig into what a landing page is first. So unlike a website with multiple web pages, a landing page is just a single web page, okay, with one intent. So it could be one page that a person lands on, they click on, usually with the intent to convert the visitor to do something, okay? It could be join my email list or get this 20% off coupon, which again, you're entering their email list usually to put in your email. It could be joining a Facebook group, right? Like, so it has one intent to pop up or it could be simply an outright buy of an item. So one page, one in 10. They have a clear call to action, minimal distractions, and a very targeted message. So they're very good at usually accomplishing that one in 10. In fact, that's the first pro of having a landing page is you increase your conversion rate, meaning because it has one purpose, it does better at accomplishing that single purpose. They don't have the clutter or confusion that sometimes a website may have or ways to get distracted by clicking on multiple things. And they can also be more effective at actually tracking the data, okay, and analysis. So you 
you can actually track the number of clicks that happen. You can track then the conversions that occur and your return and your ROI, your return on investment of your efforts. And so you can make data-driven smart decisions on that actual page to better optimize your results. But the greatest strength of a landing page is also its greatest weakness, okay? So when we're talking cons, it has limited information. So while simplicity is amazing to help accomplish the one result, the disadvantage is there may not be enough information for your person for what they're looking for. If they don't know you well, or they're maybe not well versed with your product, they may be hesitant to click or convert. And it also usually has less tech flexibility when it comes to the setup, okay? It's usually more like, you click to set up the landing page and it's a kind of one and done, done for you setup. And so if you don't have a lot of design experience, it can be a little tricky to try to alter it yourself. Now let's talk about funnels. Okay. So a funnel in its simplest form. Okay. So think even like you can think like a good old school kitchen funnel or the funnel where it's wider at the top and narrow at the bottom. Keep that image in your mind. So it's a funnel is a path that guides a person toward a desired action. Okay. They enter at the top and whoop, they get moved down to the bottom of the funnel. And usually it's a series of web pages. The first one being a landing page. And it's set up so that traffic flows from one point of entry through a series of steps to a specific action or end result, a sale. Like I said, typically a funnel starts with a landing page, the opt-in page, and then has a series of these steps. It may have things like a squeeze and a bridge page. We won't talk about all those things or even a thank you page, but it doesn't have to have all of them. But a funnel really is more than just a landing page. Let me explain here as we talk about the pros of a funnel. So in essence, with a funnel, you can increase customer engagement because you have more steps. Okay. Again, think with a landing page, one page, one end result. Okay. With a funnel, they're moving through a series of steps. And so if you're providing value at each, so it could be free videos, books that you're, you know, eBooks, product demos, um, you establish yourself as the authority as you do that. And you give your potential client more chances to engage with your content throughout the funnel. The person joins, they join your email list, they join your group, they maybe book a call. And overall, the likelihood increases that they're going to become a paying client and than likely a repeat paying client. Also in this, you can see that they are a more strategic sales system. So it's more in depth, more comprehensive than a single landing page. And you're addressing a potential client's needs and concerns at each step of the funnel. This builds trust and credibility as the buyer is on their journey and can also help increase the average order volume. Okay. And if you don't know what I mean by that, it's when people add things on. So I'm sure you've experienced this at some point. You just didn't know it. So when you've gone to a page, you click to buy something and then you're in the checkout process and boop, another screen pops up and it's like, do you want to add this onto your order? Every time I order pizza, they do this, right? That's like, do you want to add on dessert? Do you want to add on drinks? Do you want to add on an appetizer, right? So I'm going through the steps of a funnel with different upsells at that point. And you can see how that naturally increases the order volume. Let me know in the comments if you've got sucked in by that too. So that said, the negatives of a funnel is that it is more complex, right? We've just talked about this. So they can be complex to design, to implement, particularly if you have different customer segments. Okay. We're not going to get into all those things. And it's also one of the reasons why I find myself building a lot of funnels for people because you really need to have your ducks in a row to make sure all the dots on the interwebs are connected. And if you have a high lead volume coming in, another con is that you might need even more additional extra resources to manage everything, right? So I mean that your bills are going up in terms of what you're spending to manage the funnel. And so that can just overall increase increase your costs. And then lastly, funnels can have some limited flexibility because again, you're leading people to that single step. Whereas like a website, it's kind of like a free for all and they can click around wherever. Again, a funnel is strategically moving someone down closer to a single end result. So how do you choose the best thing for your business, right? So you're like, okay, Steph, we've covered websites, we've covered landing pages, we've covered funnels. What should I do for my business? And this is where I'm going to tell you it really is specific to your goals and the needs of your target audience. And then you also need to consider like, okay, what can I afford? For example, lower priced end products may not require a very complex funnel to drive your sales, right? It could be a simple click, poof, the store pops up. 
Whereas like higher end items where people need to have a greater level of trust built with you, they may require something more complex. I would love to chat with you about this. Go to stephaniepreci.com and click on the PAC membership. Inside the PAC, I'm helping entrepreneurs every single day build out their tech and automations and really figure out what's best for them and their needs in their business. And I'll give you feedback on the copy, the actual text on your pages. I'll give you advice on, hey, should you have a full website? When do you need to establish a website? Should you just do a landing page, a funnel, what that looks like, and I'll break it all down for you. And I even have tech tutorials on how to set it all up, or I can build it for you depending on your wish. Let me know in the comments what you think that you're going to build out, a website, a funnel, or a landing page, or what you have already. And before you hop off my channel, check out either of these two videos that are popping up on the screen. They're here to help you win in your business. And I'll be back next week with another new video.